So one thing that happens when you look at the wheel is that you notice there are two halves. Actually, there's four halves. Don't tell that to your math teacher. Um, but the, the doing half and the done to half and the receiving half and the giving half. And it can be helpful to look at those as halves. So that's what we're going to do. The, we're going to talk about the doing half and the done to half first. So the doing half is you are the one who's touching your partner. And the doing half includes, of course, the giving quadrant or the serving quadrant, which means you're doing it for them. And the taking quadrant, which means you're doing it, but it's for you. So the crux of which one it is, is who is it for. And that's the distinguishing line between those two doing parts of the experience. It's unfortunate because it makes it a little trickier to talk about that for most people, doing is synonymous with giving. We use the word give when we, what we actually mean is do. So lots of times when people are exploring and discovering the taking quadrant, they'll say, oh, you mean when I'm giving, I'm receiving. And it's no, actually when you're doing, you're receiving. When you're receiving, you're not giving at all. In fact, the only way to learn to receive is to stop giving. In fact, that could be said to be one of the main things that you learn in this whole process. So know that when we're talking about doing, that the giving is a different question. That's what really creates the entire wheel, actually. So we're talking about the doing half. In touch, true in a lot of life as well, but definitely in touch, there's sort of two different ways to go about doing. One is to create a feeling that you want to have, or to create a setup or an experience that you want to have. And so you do this so that that other thing happens. Or you do this, you touch in this way so that you feel this or your partner feels this. And that's a strategy. And in our lives, certainly, we need to be able to use strategy sometimes. I do this so that that other thing. That's one way of doing. The other kind of doing is to express a feeling that you already have. So this is the kind that little children are particularly great at. This is where you move your body in ways that express a feeling that you already have. So you express affection that you already feel, you express joy, you express sadness, you express express your own turn on. This is when you run through the park shouting and singing for joy because you're excited. It's probably been a long time since you did that, which is a great example to show that that doing as an expression of how we already feel is often very difficult for us as adults. We've long since learned to turn that volume down. So you have strategy, doing to create a feeling that you want to have, and you have expression doing to express a feeling that you already have. Guess which one is more satisfying? Kind of depends on the situation. But there's a kind of, when you express a feeling that you already have, it's inherently and innately satisfying. And that's the kind of doing that we are mostly exploring here, particularly in the taking quadrant. For most people, most of the time, particularly around touch and especially around sexual touch, most of what seems to be taught and, and the approach that's mostly taken is the strategy. You do this stroke so that they will feel this way or so, so that therefore then you can feel this other way. So, yeah, that can work sometimes, but there's something very important that's lost when, you, when you're going the route of strategy. A lot of things, actually. In the doing half of the wheel, you get to discover and play with the difference between doing as a strategy and doing as an expression. 
and you get to find out that doing as an expression is actually possible. Um, and in the taking, it's in the taking quadrant that you learn that. And that uh, with the consent skills where you trust yourself not to harm or annoy your partner, that's when you, your ability to move and touch as an expression of yourself really blossoms, and that's where it gets to be a lot of fun. So there's something interesting in the doing half in the, the relationship between the giving quadrant and the taking quadrant. And that's this. The crux of the difference, of course, is who it's for. Most people want to get good at the giving quadrant, and that's what most instruction is about, how to do this technique to this body part. But what actually makes you a better giver is mastering the taking quadrant. And here's why. Number one is that your hands relax and show up in the present moment. They are not on a mission. Hands that are on a mission do not feel good. Unfortunately, that's the only kind of uh, touch that most people have experienced is hands that are on a mission. So you're going to find something completely different here. So in the taking quadrant, you learn to take in, you learn to notice, you learn to bring the information in both with your hands and verbally. And so that means that you can actually show up better. And in the giving role, you definitely you want that. It also means that your hands relax, they become more intuitive, they sort of know what to do. Uh, they become more sensual. Um, it's very difficult to relax under a pair of hands that is tense. So that's really important. The other thing that happens is that you, um, you learn that you are welcome here, that you belong here, that, there's, that it's okay to be here and show up and be you and bring your curiosity and your passion and your desire with you um, so that you're no longer sort of avoiding that. And again, that makes you tense. And finally, as you master the taking role, you, that need is met. The need to just experience and touch uh, a, a person, that need is met. And so you don't have to use giving as an excuse to get your hands on someone. That means your giving can become clean and clear and really is for the other person so that you, it's easier for you to make space for them to bring their desires forward. So if you want to get really good at giving, first of all, master the taking role. And then you relax, your hands show up, you're able to take in and notice, then you become much better at giving. And your giving is clean and satisfying to both of you. So the doing half of the circle is a lot of fun. It's just fun to do stuff um, in both forms, particularly when you know the difference. It is easy, however, to get stuck here. And very often it's because you are afraid or resistant to being in the done-to half. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So the doing half of the circle, loads of fun, the crux, the distinction between the two, giving and taking, is who is it for? And the more clear that is, the more fun each of those two quadrants are. And what determines that is not what you feel like or not what your intention is. What determines that is what is your agreement. How would you like me to touch you? You're giving. May I touch you this way or that way? You're taking. And when you have that agreement, that determines which of those two quadrants you're in. So enjoy. Lots of fun doing. <laughs>